folks. Um, so this PowerPoint is for Chapter 1, Success for All Students in the General Education Classroom. So inclusion in today's classroom, um, you, you're looking here in the, your, your book and you're seeing a couple of names, mainstreaming versus inclusion, um, and here are the definitions for you. Uh, mainstreaming is the inclusion of students with special needs in the general education uh, process, and inclusion is the, the word that's most used today to describe how we place students with special needs in general education. Um, inclusion is more than a modern term, um, uh, but it's not really precise. Um, so it's important to determine what each speaker or writer means by inclusion um, when we're talking about these things. So students with special needs um, are students who have a disability that negatively affects their school performance and they're served by special education and federal laws. Um, other groups that uh, are considered significant enough to warrant special education, and this is really important here. So we'll be looking at students with special needs, but we'll also be looking at the ways in which we include gifted and talented students, culturally and linguistically diverse students, our students at risk of school fa fa uh, failure. Um, so it's really important that we, we consider these groups. And in addition to just gifted and talented students, there's the twice exceptional student, um, that student who is both gifted and talented and who may have a special need. Okay, so um, Individuals with Disability Education Improvement Act, IDEA, um, lists these particular disabilities um, that are included in the IDEA. Now we might call them a little bit something a little bit different. Generally, we don't refer to someone with mental retardation. We prefer the term cognitive or intellectual disability, um, and the serious emotional disturbance. The the term that's that's um, mostly used is behavioral disorders. Um, autism now is autism spectrum um, disorder, uh, orthopedic impairment or, or physical impairments, and then ADD and ADHD are covered under other federal le legislation. And it's also covered under other here in IDEA. So it's covered in a couple places. Um, historical and uh, uh, current practices is really quite fascinating to, um, to look at. And I've given you some supplemental information on this to look at. Um, here it says, that it's, it's kind, it says that in the past students with special needs were placed in general education classes because that was all there was. But I want you to think back even before there were special education courses. So historically, people with disabilities were, were often placed in, in mental institutions, um, asylums, or, or other institutions where there was no education at all. And if there was, it was incidental, it wasn't planned. And if you want to go back even further, we go back to ancient Greece, um, and, you know, and the, the, the philosophers, Plato and Aristotle, called for infanticide, in other words, killing children um, who were disabled um, at birth. Um, and that led to all kinds of horrible, cruel things like throwing children off from cliffs and leaving them on hills to die. Um, and so I found a nice PowerPoint that really out, that lays out that historical perspective all the way from the Greeks to the present. And I've included it in this week's uh, reading. It's written by a gentleman from Belgium, so at the end there are some uh, slides that are about Belgium's um, special ed. You don't have to read that part, but I would like you to look at that. It gives you this really nice um, timeline of what's happened in um, special education. Um, I'm not going to go over these again. These are, these are legislative laws, and you can read through them on page 8 in your text. Um, they, are, they are important to know, and you should read them, but I'm not going to go through them here. Um, the benefits of including students uh, with special needs, I think we're, we're all pretty cognizant of this, is that they're not segregated, the labeling is de-emphasized, um, and they might leave the classroom for special help, um, but, um, you know, but they're not excluded um, specifically. Now next week, we're going to actually talk a little bit about, I'm going to get to this, I really don't like the way this does this, but that's okay. Um, next week we're going to talk a little, oh, I'm so sorry. Sorry about that. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about um, some of the, the constraints of including students with special needs, because there are some considerations, there are some challenges, um, but we'll talk about that next week when we get there. Um, role of special education, I'm going to skip this one. I think we're, we're pretty, you know, we, can, we understand this, we can read about that. Uh, I'm going to skip the definition as well. I think it's important to look at some of these related services, though. So if it's someone um, who, who 
does uh, fall under the IDEA. Um, it could benefit from psychological services, for special transportation, speech and language services, um, special physical education, rehabilitation, rehabilitation counseling, and physical and occupational therapy. So these are all things that are covered um, for exceptional children. Supplemental aids, um, there are supports um, provided to students that's, that will assist them, for instance, you know, um, taped textbooks, uh, computer adaptations, peer tutoring, and there's a host of others as well. These are just a few. Um, the IEP is important, um, and the IE team is important. On page 13 and 15 of your text, there's an example of an IEP. I'd like you to become familiar with this. As a general education teacher, you may be the, the, you know, the first person um, to actually recognize that an intervention needs to take place, and more than likely, you'll serve on, on an IEP team. Um, and when you, when you have a child with an IEP, you are legally obligated to abide by it. So it's important for you to understand how to read it, um, what its purpose is, and so forth. So do take a, a look at that. Um, there's another article I've provided for you called Special Education News, and there is a little short article there about uh, the history of IEPs, and so you should look at that as well. Um, least restrictive environment or the LRE. On page 16, there's a great chart, and I'm not going to go over that entire one, um, but we always want to have children in the least restrictive environment. Um, it's most appropriate for that they be as close to the general education uh, classroom as we possibly can. Here's the law that, that you know, compels us to do that. Um, and inclusion is always the goal. We, we always want to get inclusion if we can. Um, and then again, it goes from the least restrictive, which would be, you know, the full day regular class placement, to the most restrictive, which would be a home or a hospital placement. And there's many things in between. So do take a look at that chart um, that's on page 16. Uh, current issues and trends. So this is, I'm going to go over this a little bit here, and I'm just going to put these all out here. Um, goals 2000, um, this was all children will start school ready to learn, a 90% high school graduation rate, um, United States would be the first in the world in math and science, and every adult would be literate. Well, we clearly haven't reached the goals 2000, it's 2015, although the emphasis on literacy has been good because it has increased the awareness of literacy and has really, you know, uh, ramped that up. So uh, if anything's come out of that, um, the literacy piece has been good. Um, high school gradua graduation rates are up in some states and down in others, but generally it's up overall, so we've made um, some progress there. And then the standards movement, um, uh, which is really sort of part of No Child Left Behind, uh, we are still under No Child Left Behind, believe it or not, because the the, uh, the law hasn't been reauthorized for several years. It's been sitting in the in the, uh, the the legislature, and hopefully that this legislature will get it reauthorized, and hopefully it will be reauthorized differently. So No Child Left Behind really focuses on school accountability and research-based programs and practices, and is, began instituting annual testing for children. Um, and now we have, which is, isn't on this slide because this is a 2011 and now it's 2015, is President Obama's race to the top, um, which um, is predicated on rigorous standards for all, uh, which is why we have Common Core State Standards that was hopefully going to be a standards for across the country that all states would adopt. Um, and most did, but now some are also starting to, to rescind that. We'll talk more about that later, um, but just know that, that rigorous standards is part of Race to the Top. And by the way, Race to the Top was a funding bill, so the idea was that if you fulfill these obligations uh, the federal government was asking you to do as a school, you could apply for funds, you could get a waiver for NCLB. Um, so rigorous standards and teacher evaluation, uh, school choice, and yearly assessments. So in the state of Maine, we've adopted Common Core State Standards. We have a teacher evaluation system that is going to be put into place this year, or this year or next year. I'm, I'm blinking out on that. I think it's this year. Um, and uh, where student test scores are part of that teacher evaluation. School choice, um, state of Maine had, now has charter schools. Um, and yearly assessments, um, and that would be the Smarter Balance Assessment, which we'll look at um, at some point during the, the course. So these current issues and trends have defined education um, for the last 
15 years and continue to define how we look at education. And it does affect um, special needs children because um, under the, the, the uh, standards movement, uh, the special needs children are subject to those standards. And in proficiency-based learning, um, they are, are expected to meet those standards. Um, and that can be a problem. So we'll talk about that as we go through the course as well. Um, I, I mentioned this earlier that, you know, as a classroom teacher, you may be the first professional to actually identify that a referral or intervention is needed. Um, you will be a valuable source to the school um, in planning the IEP and then executing the IEP. And then things to remember, here's just a summary of the things that we've looked at here. I'm not going to read through these. I'm just going to put them up here for you to look at. Um, and I think that's about it in terms of of the um, um, highlights of this particular text. I would call your attention to some of the boxes and um, little pullouts in your book. Don't skip over those. Um, when you're reading a text, I know you should you know, read through the text, but then go back and look at the boxes because they're very important. Um, the little charts, the for your information that has a little red heading on it, um, these are good things to look at. And in the last of the chapter, there's the window on the web. I highly recommend that you check out these, um, these resources. The, the one that you're given this week is the Council for Exceptional Children. It's a great website and could be very instrumental in helping you think through what it means to be um, a general education teacher with special needs um, or exceptional children. So that's it. Um, I'll be doing another one of these for uh, Chapter 2, and I'll be talking to you soon.